So in this video I'm going to change the relay which I originally installed with one that has jumpers to select between high and low enabling. The nice thing about this relay module is it has screw terminals so it should make this a lot easier to do. So I'm just going to wire the disco laser and check whether the new relay does what it's meant to do. Cool, that's off. Oh, it works. So if I had plugged the spindle in, it wouldn't turn on when everything was connected. And it's thanks to these little jumpers underneath the cable here. You can't really see them, but they're tiny. And three turns it on. And five turns it off. So I'm going to connect the two inputs together so anything that's attached to the gang sockets um, will just turn on when it's on relay mode and when it comes to using the laser I'll get myself an inline fan and basically just turn it on when I have to maybe get a blinking timer or something and have anything, all the fumes just pumped outside into the real world where people suffer. So I've attached two things to the gang sockets in the relay module one is a beam Z LED moonflower sound control the other is a laser stage lighting module Okay, so I just want to do an overview of what's in this control box um, just in case you would like to try and make something similar. Um, you can try and follow some of the things that I've done here. Um, this was a learning process for me. I hadn't done anything like this before and I simply had to just research each step, look at examples of how other people have done this and then apply it to what I was doing. So I was using the original um, shield and Arduino that came with the X-Carve and it's, that's all under this section here and I didn't really change too much about the wiring although in the first video I had to 
change a setting in the config file um, which meant some of the pins on this side of the shield were swapped. Um, I approached it in a kind of very physical way um, and started to build it and just see what happened, which isn't really how you should um, do electronics, frankly. Um, but I obviously had problems which um, manifested because there were things about the components that I bought that I didn't realize I needed to address. So for example, both the laser driver board and the original um, relay module are activated by a low signal. And what this meant was when everything was wired up, um, both the laser and the things connected to the relay module would turn on once I plug the USB cable in. And that's obviously quite dangerous. The way I dealt with that on the laser driver module was by adding a pull down resistor, ignore the red wire, which connected to the ground, in this case on the switch. And that's in this mess here. In the end, I ended up buying a new relay module, which had these two jumpers there, which I could swap to an active high enabling and that meant that the driver board and the relay module were responding to the signal in the same way. Other things I did were using aviation panel mounts to connect between the motors on the CNC machine and the limit switches. So I have the Y, the X, the Z and the limit switches and this goes to the laser and then I have this switch which goes between the relay and the laser depending on what I'm using which allows the signal to be sent to whatever I'm using. I also added a emergency stop which, which I had to dismantle so that I could actually run the power cables for both the shield and the laser through I didn't realize you could do that, so that was quite useful. And this also acts as a, another off button. Because the power supply unit was a 24 volt unit, I had to use a step down voltage regulator there to power the driver board. I'm not happy about using DuPont connectors, but these headers looked a little bit different from what you'd normally plug into, say a motherboard or something computer related and I ended up going with these instead. Um, there's a part of me that would like to just smother that in hot glue just so that they don't pop out, but I think this should be okay for the time being. So I ended up just using some gang sockets um, which I put through these glands and crimped to the uh, relay modules. And that seems to have worked pretty well. The back looks like this. I have one power socket module, kettle module, um, which goes via the PSU to the relay and another one that goes directly to the relay. And then I've got the USB input here. I also have a handle if I want to walk around with this thing. So the next thing I need to do is create a file to cut some openings for air vents on the top panel and then attach this fan and screw that onto the control box and then I'll be done. If you'd like to see the previous controller box videos they will appear on screen now and now. You can also become a patron by clicking on the other link that will appear on screen momentarily now. Now thanks again for watching.